Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, at your divine baptism in the Jordan River, you revealed that you are consubstantial with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Enlighten our minds and our hearts on this day of your great epiphany. Make us holy by the indwelling of your lost spirit and make us worthy to celebrate this festival of lights so that we may glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the one Father whose voice came from heaven, <clears throat> testifying to his beloved Son, and to the only begotten Son, who is worshipped, whose light radiated upon the river, and who accepted baptism from John his forerunner and to the Holy Spirit who descended and appeared above the head of the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. The earth rejoices in your epiphany, O Son of God. And the peoples and the nations shall for joy on this day of your baptism. You have dawned from the Father and have sanctified baptism for us. O Church of the nations, proclaim the glory of the Son of God, who became man and was baptized for your sake in the Jordan River, and cry out to him. Blessed are you, O Christ, O Word of God. You willingly emptied yourself, and you took the form of man. You gave us a pledge of life in the waters of baptism, making us holy and heirs of your kingdom. Now, o Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to sanctify us through this great epiphany, create a new heart within us. Make us newborn children of your Father and pour out forgiveness upon your flock that we may worship you, glorify your Father, and give thanks to your Holy Spirit forever. Thank you. 
O Christ, the word of the heavenly Father, you became man for our sake, and you were baptized in the Jordan River. You became the way and the door that leads us to the Father. Grant us your grace and mercy and accept the fragrance of our incense, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Kodishat, <laughs> Hayalato no kodishat lo mahoyahoto. She hold it amid men you hanon it raha. and nations, waters have been truly blessed. All on earth be attentive, waters have been sanctified. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring light, the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. 
So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Praise be to God always. Amen. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Shlomo Elokolokhuna From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John who proclaimed life unto the world Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls The Apostle John writes, And the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard this, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following him, and he said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. So they went, and they saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. And Andrew the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon, and he told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated, the Anointed. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah, and that you shall be called Kepha which translated means Peter. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessing to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessing to
Our Rabbi, where are you staying? In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. As a number of you are already aware of the fact, the bishop through the eparchy and the work that we're doing because the Pope Francis has decided that over the next three years, we have this whole synodal process. So actually in this month of January, we've already had one of our first sessions um, of about a dozen people. And we'll have a second one this coming Friday. And always remembering that the notion of synod, not the notion, actually the very meaning of the word, syn in Greek means together or with. Odos, you all have odometers in your car. Odos in the Greek means path. And so your odometer is the measuring of your way, measuring of your path, the odometer. So synodos means together path, path together. And so synodally, the Eastern churches have always worked this way. To this day, the, the Maronite bishops from around the world will gather in northern Lebanon to discuss what needs to be done in the church. Each year, as a synod, even through all the economic collapse and disasters of the last two years, they still meet every year to discuss synodally. When there's an appointment that needs to be done for a church, for the bishops, they vote on that, and they make it synodally, these decisions. So the East has always had this synodal manner of, of, of journeying on the path together. But this gospel today shows very clearly how that works. That our Lord in his teaching, he calls these, he has contacts, John sends his disciples. There is from person to person this pathway together being made towards the hidden father. So the great importance for us, we mentioned last week, because this is the same chapter one of the gospel of St. John. And we mentioned last week the two things. One, that the gospel is a message, a message we receive and we pass on. It's not just a gift, a gift we just receive. It's ours, we put it on the table, we stick it in the closet, whatever the case may be, but it's mine. But the gospel is more than just a gift, it is a message. And a message is something that is relayed. It is given to one person and the person passes it on to the next. That is the grace of salvation. It is meant to be transmitted. It is something which is passed on. And so we talked about last week that aspect, and we also talked about the fact that it's hard. It's not easy to communicate this message. The easiest way that is given to us on a silver platter is the babies that are born to us because they're sponges. And that is how it actually is meant to move in the sacrament of matrimony generation to generation. But our colleagues, our fellow students, our coworkers, that's hard. That is difficult to communicate. And so those two aspects we considered last week. But this is the very core. Synodos of being on the path together is the very core of discipleship to our Lord. To be a disciple of our Lord means to learn, to hear the voice of our Lord, to learn from him. And in learning, though because the gospel is a message, it means also communicating. So the word itself, disciple, means someone who's learning. But the discipleship, the act of being disciple, is to receive and learn that message in order to communicate it. And that requires clarity and discernment in communication, and that's really more of our consideration today. Clarity and discernment, how we communicate. Now, when we see this first chapter of St. John, the section that we have that comes just before the gospel today was last week's gospel, John's testimony of who our Lord is and why he recognizes him as being the Messiah. That's why today's gospel says, and the next day, John was back there again, and with two of his disciples, he sees our Lord coming back to the same place, and he points him out and says, this is the Lamb of God. This is the one who takes away the sin of the world. And we're told very clearly in that message of communication, those two disciples, he doesn't say, go after him. We're just told they hear that message from John, and they go and they run after our Lord. And our Lord notices that, turns around today in the gospel and says, what are you looking for? What do you want? And they don't ask him anything else. They said, where are, where are you staying? Where's your place? 
And that's the, he's not, they're not asking for teaching. They're just simply saying, and it's an interesting little detail that St. John gives and clearly has a great importance to St. John. And certainly the unnamed second disciple is John himself. John famously throughout the whole gospel never names himself, but is clearly giving a first person witness in his writing. And so he says, well, the first one, he says one of the disciples is Andrew. But he doesn't tell you who the other one is. But he's telling you so much of a detail to say it's the 10th hour. 10th hour is about 4 p.m. I say about because in the classical world, there are 12 hours in the day and there are 12 hours at night, period. So in the wintertime, that means hours during the daytime are less than 60 minutes because you have to squish in 12 measurements into that short time. And then in the summertime, those hours are much bigger because you have more than 12 periods of 60 minutes. And so an hour, so when they say the fourth hour, it's about 4 p.m. It's slightly past mid-afternoon. All right. And this is a detail. And we're just told, our Lord says, we'll come and see. You want to receive, you want, you ask this question. And come and see, and we told they went and they saw. That's it, no other detail. Where is your place, Rabbi? So they call him already teacher. And they go and they, rem- they go with him that day. This communication then goes from Andrew to find his brother Simon. And remember, Simon is the brother who remains back working with their father, fishing in the lake, while Andrew runs off after all kinds of religious experiences with John the forerunner down in the wilderness. Now he comes back, not to work, but to come back and to find his brother and say, hey, not just simply, oh, it was awesome, but to say to him, we found the one that has been promised from the creation. We have found the Messiah prophesied to us under the law of Moses. This is a huge, this is a huge announcement. And doubtless, as the families go, right, Simon is certainly not really believing this is the Messiah. But he does go with his brother to meet this man that he's found because he loves his brother, clearly. And he goes, and then in meeting our Lord, there's no exchange of words. It's only what our Lord says to Simon. You are Simon. You are the son of Jonah, sometimes said son of John. But from now on, we're going to call you Boulder. We're going to call you Kepha. We're not told of any response from Peter, what he says, what Simon says in response. Again, this communication. So when we talk about discipleship, it is a reception in order to communicate, a reception in order to communicate. And that requires a clarity of what the message is first. We talked about that a bit last week. We have to have clarity as to what the Catholic faith actually teaches. What is the revelation of God? I think I mentioned to you before when I was in high school, and of course, you know, you start drinking coffee, you hang out in the diner, you solve all the problems of the world because you're 18, right? So, you know, you know everything. And we were there, and of course, we were discussing religion as one did in, you know, 100 years ago. And it was very amusing because my Baptist friend had brought up a question at the table. It followed about four of us there, I think. And he had said that so-and-so had told him that Catholics don't pray to God. And I went, okay. He said, oh yeah, Catholics don't pray to God. They only, only the Pope can pray to God, and, the other, and Catholics have to pray to the saints. Okay, so this was a Catholic who told you that this was Catholic teaching, all right? Lack of clarity, lack of clarification. And so we have to disentangle that and clarify. And then, of course, once you actually explain Christian doctrine, he said, oh, that makes much more sense. Well, yes. Normally, what the actual doctrine of the church is does make much more sense than what somebody makes up as they move along through life. So the first aspect is clarity. We cannot transmit to other people gobbledygook. It has to be clearly an understanding. And that actually is what smothers discipleship in a lot of people, is the fact that they don't actually have a confidence that they know the faith very well. So they don't actually know what to communicate or how to communicate. But the second aspect of this discipleship is not only just clarity, but also discernment in communication. How do we communicate to others? 
Now, we have in the, in the mod, the, in that aspect of the discernment of the communication has two aspects to it. What and to whom. The what we've already talked about. It's the clarity of understanding what is the objective public teaching of the faith. What is the objective reality of the Orthodox, Catholic, Apostolic faith. But there is the aspect that requires discernment of to whom. And some individuals will be more intelligent, some will be less intelligent, some will have horrible life experiences, some will have wonderful life experiences. There is an aspect of discernment as to the individual, the private receiver who is actually being communicated to. And this is an enormous part. This is an aspect which, in fact, Pope Francis emphasizes a lot are the people on the fringe. When we talk about the church as being a field hospital, it's absolutely true. But field hospitals don't just open up and wait for patients to come like Inland Hospital. You have to go out and pick up the bodies and the people who are in agony in the field and bring them in for treatment. So that aspect of our outreach, our discipleship, is the to whom aspect of who are the individuals. So that from the central radiant light of Rabbi, where are you staying? They're clearly asking for illumination, teacher. So that from that central radiant light of God, of the Rabbi, to the individual recipient, through communication of the message, we call that communication. And communication in its Latin origin literally means to bring together as one. Unum, cum, and the action of bringing together into one. Communication is not just a transference of data and information. And that's a part of the problem we have a lot in modern education. It's not really education, it's just transference of data. Here are dates, here are things, here are people. But that's not education. Education is much larger in the sense of what is being communicated. And in communication and in true, in true transference of knowledge, there is communication, which means you're bringing together as one. And this aspect of bringing together of one is precisely what forms the odos, the pathway. There is one path towards the hidden father. There is one divine plan of salvation. There's not one plan for Catholics and then everybody else just kind of does whatever they do. There is one creation, there is one salvation, there is one gospel, there is one plan of salvation, there is one pathway to heaven. There is no other one. Which is why every single day during the season of the Epiphany in the Fet Gomo, we wind up singing, unless you be baptized in water and the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's just quoting from our Lord in the third chapter of St. John. So this is not an easy thing for us to do because the communication requires that each of those places, my receiving of the faith can be screwed up. My knowledge of the faith individually can be screwed up. My discernment of how I communicate this faith to others can be screwed up. There's a lot of places for screw-ups. And screw-ups happen all the time. And the reason why I emphasize this action of communication is because we also have individuals without discernment who will just take the faith, and they may know it quite well, and they just kind of like want to like drop it on another individual, pound it on them sometimes. And this is a lack of discernment of how to communicate. This is the Catholic doctrine. You don't hold it. You're going to hell. That doesn't work either obviously. We call that, in the Catholic Church, we actually have a term for that. It's called bitter zeal. Bitter zeal. There's a zeal for the faith, and the individual sees that aspect. This is, this is Catholicism. This is the Orthodox apostolic faith. And that's great. They've got the first part and the second part right. But in the communication part, it becomes a bulldozer. And that's why it's referred to zeal. I mean, they want to communicate it. But they're communicating in a way that it's really not about the healing of the other individual. It's just about being right. And that is bitter zeal. 
It doesn't actually communicate the healing. It actually just winds up fostering both in the individual who's trying to communicate, to pass on the message, and though certainly the one who receives it, bitterness. This is painful. And the faith is actually not painful. When the faith we first receive it, it has an attraction. But as you go deeper into it, it becomes painful because I realize my life is screwed up. So there's always the next stage in which when we enter into the faith, we realize what aspects of our lives have to be healed. And that's painful. But when we go through that healing process, go through that therapy, then we begin to realize how deeply it actually holds together as one. And then we see its beauty. And the individual who's received the gospel must have gone through those stages to actually have the ability to communicate it because they themselves love it. And that actually will be the sermon at 11 o'clock. And so we're going to talk about the three characteristics, otherwise it makes it too long. But the three characteristics of this communication have to be a charity and compassion and vision. And those have little breakdowns to them also. So at 11 o'clock, we're going to do it. And for the moment, everything's recorded. So you can always look at it. If you have an interest to go deeper into what is this message received and how we communicate it. But for us this morning at nine o'clock, it's just simply for us to understand that the gospel is a message. It requires clarity and discernment in transferring this to others of what we received ourselves and to whom in their condition that they're in to communicate it to them, but that the whole purpose is to bring about the synodos, the being together on a path towards the hidden father in the kingdom, which requires compassion because our desire is to communicate something which is beautiful and healing and which is a communication, meaning it brings us together as one. This constructs the path. This constructs the communication. This is a synod. This is a synodos. And understanding that, now you can go back and read the whole first chapter of St. John. From the Word, the Word was made flesh, the light and life that enter into the world, the testimony of John, John pointing out, disciples leaving, and those disciples communicating to those around them. It all makes much more sense when we understand the reality that the gospel is message. It requires charity. And then we understand that question when our Lord has asked them, what are you looking for? Rabbi, where do you stay? Where is your place? And so we ask this day that our Lord bring us into that very place of that teaching of our rabbi, of our teacher, to bring a clarification of our minds, a zeal to our souls, because we have entered truly into the beauty of the healing grace of the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the day and the life of the world to come. Amen. Itelvot madeb heid aloho, walvot aloho dam kharetayo. Weinem sugo taibo to keulal baitoch wesko deb hayek lo, od kohod el shoch. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Peter in chains. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
On page 774. 774. 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. before you to receive your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord may the light of your face shine upon us deliver us from every evil and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim. Fahrodil 
He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. Remember your coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you, on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you. Descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Murio, Anin Murio, Anin Murio, Nite Mordoro Hayo Kodisho, Unachen the Lainu Alu Korbono. May those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life. Amen. O Lord, accept our intercessions and our prayers and grant security to your people, peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlight their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Peter and Chains, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to Remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O God the Father, you strengthen and you encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are those, now and forever. 
O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and that our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O oh Lord our God, to you would be glory
again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Thank you, O Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. 
Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your cross, be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <laughs>